Welcome to the tutorial how to create templates. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create templates both from the timeline view as well as from the network view. So let's start with the timeline view. So you can store anything from the timeline view as a template in the library and this includes layers as well as cells. The only disadvantage with creating templates from the timeline view is that you lose all the connections as well as effects and composites that exist for your character in the network view. So I just need to do one thing first in order to show you the different ways of creating a template. Let's select the helmet in the camera view with the transform tool, then click somewhere in the timeline view to bring the focus around it, and then use the keyboard shortcut O to center on selection. Now what I'm going to do is drag the red playhead across to, uh, let's say, frame 3 and then call up the X sheet view by clicking on this plus button here and selecting X sheet. I just needed to click on the helmet layer again uh, to bring it up here in the X sheet view. Then what I'm going to do is click on cell number 3 and change the drawing from drawing 1 to drawing 2. So off camera I created another drawing. Let's go into the drawing view to see that for the helmet. So if we drag the red playhead back a frame, we'll see this is drawing one, and this is drawing two for the helmet. So the helmet has two drawings, the first one being for the three-quarter profile view pose, and the second being for the front pose. Now if we go into the library tab, so let's maximize that so you can see it better, you'll see that there are several folders here on the left side, and actually the one that I want to access has a little lock on it, the stage library. So what I'm going to do is right click on it and select Write to Modify. And as you can see the little lock disappears which means we can now um, add things to this main root folder which for you is probably blank but I already have a template stored inside. Um, or you can create subfolders and you can do this by right clicking on the root folder and selecting New Folder. In this case I'm just going to add templates uh, to our root folder which is the stage library. So if we go back to this helmet layer here, and of course this is just the drawing layer and not the peg layer, um, I can save just my drawing of the helmet. So I'll grab this cell here from the right side of the timeline, click and drag it, and then drop it into my stage library folder. So then the rename dialog box comes up, so I can either rename my template here, or I can just click OK, and you can always right click on your template once it's in the library and select rename to rename it and the same dialog box will appear. So now instead of just selecting that single drawing cell from the right side of the timeline view I'm going to grab the entire drawing layer from the left side of the timeline view and drag and drop it into the stage library. So maybe to distinguish the difference I'll call this one hero helmet layer so that we know it's the entire layer and click OK. And now if I collapse this entire group, go back to the camera view and I'm just going to disable the hero master peg group so that there's nothing visible in the camera view. I'm first going to drag and drop this template that we created from the stage library back into my scenes. So I can drop it either here in the camera view and we know that it's okay to do that because we see that green circle with the white plus sign or I can drag and drop it here in the layer stack in the left side of the timeline view, which is what I'm going to do. So let's drop that there, and you can see that that single cell, that single drawing, now appears again in our camera view. So I just created a template in my own scene and then brought it back into my own scene. But the reason that templates are very powerful is that you can save them and then drag and drop them from this library into a new scene because this library is actually stored somewhere on my hard drive. And as we'll see as I continue along the tutorial, you can not only store and reuse drawing items, but you can actually store and reuse whole animated sequences. So anyway, let's just continue with this for now. So you saw that the single drawing cell that I created when dropped back into the timeline view uh, appears like this. And then if we grab the entire layer template and do the same thing, but maybe this time I'll drop it into the camera view. You'll see that the entire row 
so the entire 60 frames, uh, was also imported, and as was drawing one and drawing two. So if I drag the playhead across, you'll see there's drawing one, and after frame three, there's drawing two. And actually, if I created the template, even if these two drawings weren't exposed, they still exist in this layer. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's deselect both our helmet layers, and let's find that helmet one more time. So this time it took me to the uh, torso root layer, so let's click on O one more time, and from the torso root I can find the helmet. So this time I'm going to go back into the X sheet, or another way of doing it is I can open the data view by clicking on this button right here, and the data view is this right here. And you'll notice that there's a turquoise one here, and that's because on frame one, drawing one is exposed, whereas on frame three, drawing two is exposed. And you'll see that I changed here in the data view, here in the camera view, and here in the drawing substitution window in the library. So there's several ways that I can change the drawing on frame one. I can change it in the drawing substitution window by scrolling across like this. And now for the next two exposures, so frame one and two, uh, we have drawing two exposed. Or what I could have done is if I hover my mouse over the two, you'll see that the cursor changes to a hand with a double-headed black arrow, and you can use that to scroll across to the number one. Or what you can do is click on the highlighted number and change it to the drawing numbers. In this case, it would be drawing number two. And once again, if we go to the X sheet, we'll see that in the hero helmet, uh, drawing two is now exposed on all frames. And in fact, in order to get rid of this little line, what I'm going to do is select frame three, and then drag it across to frame one. So now you'll see that there's no separation. Drawing two is exposed from frame one to 60. Then what I'm going to do is go back to the library view, and then grab the hero helmet layer one more time and click and drag it into the stage library. And this time I'm going to call it hero helmet layer 02 and click OK. Then I'm going to save my scene and then create a new scene by clicking on the create new scene button from the file toolbar. And let's name our scene new and then click on the create button. So now if I go to the stage library in our new scene and I select the hero helmet layer 2 template and I click and I drag it, once again I can drop it in the camera view or in the left side of the timeline view, we'll see that drawing two is exposed for all the frames from one to 60. However, if we then go to say frame 30, for example, um, and do what we did before and change that drawing to one, you'll see that that drawing exists in this template. So it doesn't just exist in our previous scene. All the drawings are in the template that you've created, whether they're exposed or not when you create that template. And in addition to this, you can grab just the single cell drawing that we created, so that's the first one, hero underscore helmet. And not only can you drop it into the camera view or the left side of the timeline view, but you can actually also drop it into the right side of the timeline view, um, either on the hero helmet layer. If we scroll across, you'll see drawing two is exposed, drawing one is now exposed because we dropped it into this layer and then drawing two again. So this line is there because once you drop uh, a drawing in, it lasts from where you dropped it in to where the end of the previously exposed drawing was. And in addition to this, you can also grab the same template and drop it onto any layer. So this is just a regular drawing layer. It doesn't have to be the hero helmet layer. It can be any layer at all, like a blank drawing layer. But in this case, it's only exposed for a single cell because when we created the template, it was a single cell. Okay, so there's just one more thing to show you now concerning creating templates in the timeline view. So let's go back to our other scene by going to File, Open Recent Scenes, and selecting the first scene from the list. And let's not save anything from this scene in this case. And what I'm going to do is go back to the stage library, and you'll notice that in order to take things from the stage library, it doesn't matter if the lock appears because you're not modifying anything, you're just taking things. You're not adding to the library, which modifies the library. You're just taking templates from the library. So 
Let's click on the stage library and let's select this template that was here at the beginning of the video tutorial that I created off camera and it's called head underscore front underscore G. So it's this head completely the front view and the dash G just means that it's a group. So let's collapse our hero master peg for a minute and let's just drop it into the scene um, in the left side of the camera view. And this is just so that we can take a look at the contents. Well first of all you can see this is what it looks like and if I hide the hero master peg layer you'll have a better idea. So it's the face of the hero with all of his features facing forward as well. And if we open the layer you'll have to kind of take my word for this but it has the exact same layer structure as just the head group in our hero master layer. So I can show you that but it's a lot of little layers to see. So here's our head group and if we scroll down you'll see like helmet, facial features written in capital letters, uh, you know the ear underscore L, pegs, all of these things. The structure is identical so that's important to remember. So I'm going to collapse the head front layer as well as the hero master layer and I'm just going to delete this from our timeline and now what I'm going to do after enabling the hero master layer and after uncollapsing this layer one more time and actually let's scroll back down to where we saw the head group so now what I'm going to do is go back to the library reselect the head front template and you'll notice that as I drag it into the right side of the timeline view that green circle with the white plus appears and if I just go a few cells higher you'll see that now it disappears and I'm getting that a white circle with the white bar telling me that I can't drop it into the right side of the timeline view and that's because as soon as I hit the head layer the software recognizes the structure as being identical inside my hero master group and so if I just flip back and forth you can see my character in three-quarter profile and then see my character uh, in the front view and I think I changed the drawing for the helmet which is why we see it like this so let me just select the helmet again find it here, then open the data view and scroll to the first frame and select the first frame and then change this 2 back to a 1. So now if we scroll across you can see that the head turns from the three-quarter profile view to the front view. Okay, so now let's talk about creating templates from the network view. So I'm going to collapse the data view, and actually I'm going to scroll all the way up and collapse our entire hero master peg layer. And we've already done this, but if you haven't done this already, you should scroll to the first frame, select the first frame, and click on the add keyframe button so that there is um, a keyframe on the first frame for every single layer of the hero master group. And then what we're going to do is go to the network view and we can do that by clicking on this up arrow here and then clicking on it again. So now what we want to do is group all the modules of the hero master and we can do this by just clicking and dragging a selection box around all the modules with the select tool and then we can right click and select group, group selection with composite or you can use the keyboard shortcut shift command G on Mac and I believe it's shift control G on Windows. So now let's zoom in a bit to take a look at our group. So it's probably named hero underscore neck G because that was probably the topmost layer in the layer stack. So let's just click on the yellow box to rename our group module and I'm going to rename it hero master dash G for group instead of dash P for peg and close. And then if we go inside our group you can see that all the modules are there that at the top there's a multi port in which basically just allows our group to have this node, this top node um, at the top of our group modules so that you can add a peg or add other modules uh, above the group. 
and of course a multi-port out at the bottom right here which allows us to have that bottom port right here that allows us to uh, plug into the scene composite and because we group with composite all of our modules were plugged automatically into a composite which saved us a lot of time I mean the more manual way to have done this would have been to go to the module library and to select the composite from the favorites tab uh, drag it into the network view and then unplug everything from the scenes composite and plug all those modules into a new composite or a composite which would have taken a lot of time so grouping modules with its own composite is obviously the faster way to go and you can see that the shape of this composite or composite is different from that of the scenes and that's because this one if you recall is pass through so if we click on the yellow box again to bring up the layer properties we'll see that the mode is pass through and what that means if we exit the group is that uh, all of these layers will remain as unflattened layers whereas our main composite is bitmap which means that all the elements from the scene before we write them and write just means like to export them as a film or when they're displayed are flattened into a bitmap image so because our group is not flattened into a bitmap image other modules in the scene that are hooked into the main scene composite can interact with various layers of our group as unflattened layers and that's the reason that you would change your composite from bitmap to pass through and the purpose of us grouping our hero layers because we now want to create it into a template so what I can do is select our hero master group from the network view then use the keyboard shortcut command C to copy on Mac or control C to copy on Windows and then I can go back to the library view by clicking on this down arrow um, so we're going to put it in the stage library and I can just click in this side of the stage library so the right side and use command V to paste or you can use control V to paste on Windows and you can see that the rename dialog box appears so I'm just going to keep it as hero underscore master dash g dot tpl actually in fact maybe I'll just name it hero master tpl and get rid of the group and say ok and now if we save this scene and then do what we did before and that's create a new scene and I'll rename this new again and click on the create button and then we go into the timeline and into our stage library and we grab the hero master template and once again we can either drag and drop it into the camera view or the left side of the timeline view and then we uncollapse our layer you can see that not only has all of our timing remains so you know we see this little animated bit of the leg kicking up but then we also see the head turns, that drawing substitution, all of those things, um, all of those connections, all of our effects, composites, uh, pegs, advanced groupings, function columns, uh, the scene length, the drawings, etc. have been retained within our template that was created through the network view, which we didn't see when we created our template through the timeline view. So that's obviously an advantage of creating templates in the network view. So that's it for the tutorial how to create templates. Stay tuned for the next tutorial how to set up a scene and animate objects and the camera.